yourself, love your friends, love your family too. These are things we've been taught and we know they'll be true. There are many mysteries surrounding you and God. You are not alone upon this path that you have trod. If you believe in inner light, then God is shining through. Let this light come tumbling out. It is meant for you. So you love yourself, love your friends, love your family too. These are things we've been taught and we know they'll be true. In each and every one of us, our love resides so fine. It's a gift we all possess, built in by design. Love was meant for everyone, and that includes you too. Save some love for yourself, that's what you should do. So you love yourself, love your friends, love your family too. These are things we've been taught, and we know they'll be true. Thanks for Reverend Ikea Param being here today, but let me just say a few words about her uh, in case you don't know her. Uh, she is a staff minister at Oakland Center for Spiritual Living in Oakland, California. She graduated from Holmes Institute, the Centers for Spiritual Living Ministerial School, and has a master's degree in women's spirituality from Sophia University. She enjoys writing poetry and capturing beauty around her in watercolor. So we welcome Reverend Ikea today and look forward to her words to us. I thank you very much. You see, I have my Santa hat on because it's the season. Can you hear me? Okay, all right now. <laughs> I am very grateful to be here. I love seeing all of you who came out in the rain. I mean, that's a tribute. I mean, it's a tribute probably to this wonderful spiritual center. But I'm so happy to be here. Hi, Zoom people. I love you too. So today's topic all over the country in Unity Churches is love. That's something we all need. It's something we all reach out for. It's the secret of life's happiness. So let's see. I do have another slide, and here it comes. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I need to be patient. There we go. So I thought, of course, of the everyday love that we all know and experience. Self-love is first, but I might talk about it last. Um, affection. These, these things, all of these, are, they are bound to the earth, you might say. They're bound to our bodies. They're not off in the heavens. So we feel affection for our pets. 
We feel affection for our friends. Affection is something that we know every day. And familial love, of course, is natural, even in, in families. I often wonder, what is it like if you, if you are an orphan? But whoever is the mother to you, or the father figure for you, you feel that love and attachment. Or you can. I know I had a challenge with my mother, but there was a bond there. She was very unhappy in her marriage. And unfortunately, she kind of took it out on everybody. <laughs> so that was hard, but there was still love there. And she still wanted the best for me, and I wanted her to be happy. Romantic love, of course, Hallmark Cards has got a corner on that, and C's candy, the little red heart-shaped candy boxes, absolutely romantic love. And then patriotic love. I put it in there because, you know, right now we're having, some people are having challenges with their patriotism because they don't like what's going on in the world. Well, it's like all the other kinds of love. You don't like everything about it, but there's still that feeling of connection and that feeling of this is my place. It's interesting because we Americans, we can be born on one side of the country and move to the middle and wind up on the other side, and yet wherever we are is our place and it's our country. And when you see the pictures of the capital, you know, you feel a certain pride. And when you go visit, it's kind of a thrill to see the Lincoln Memorial and all the other wonderful buildings. So we have a patriotic love. Even if we don't agree with the president right now, if that's the case, or our senators or our congressmen, well, they're still ours. There's a bond. And they're important enough where we pay attention and go to vote. So, and my favorite is agape love. It's not very common perhaps, but that's the kind of love and giving and caring that a person does without any expectation of a return. They're just loving and generous and helpful. And they don't expect you to do anything back because they were. That's my favorite. So all those are, in a way, tied to things on this earth. Our familial love is between our, our, our physical parents and ourselves and our siblings. You know, all of those have some sort of a connection to the earth. Or there can be also things, there can be pets that you love. There can be objects that you love. There's a man who just moved in downstairs for me. And he has the most beautiful furniture. I was watching as he was coming in. I was like, wow. You can love objects of art. I was happy to see Sue Ellen Peterson's painting again when I came. She's one of my favorite artists. In, just inspired by many, many, many figures from history, from Bible stories. So we can have all those things connected to physical things, right? Maybe your favorite jewelry, whatever it is. Now, in the olden days when Jesus was alive, if people wanted to say a prayer, they had to go on a big journey to the temple in Jerusalem. And it was kind of stressful. I don't know if you remember the story of Jesus meeting the woman in, at the well, and she was, you know, she had to come a certain time of day and get water and go back. And she was talking about, she, she kind of complained about this big trip they had to make every year just to say prayers and offer sacrifice all the way to Jerusalem. And Jesus told her, well, there's going to be a new way. There will be a new way. I bring a new way. And the new way was not going to be a, temp a temple or a building or a city. Um, it was going to be loving people wherever they were, loving people, caring people, doing things to change the world. So it, it went from the outside, like all the other things in the, in the beginning, went from the outside to 
within. The love was within people. It was portable. So um, wherever there were people who understood the centrality of love and the importance of showing love, that would, be, that would be the important thing. That would be the new way. It wasn't going to be going to the temple. It was going to be people being loving, people being caring, people helping each other. And in, nowadays we have organizations you can join to help the environment or help, help, help whatever you want to make a difference in. Encourage people to see the beauty, to make beauty themselves by singing, by making artwork, doing all sorts of things that would be people with love in their heart wanting to find a way to show that. It would be people taking folks on, on camping trips and hiking trips to enjoy moving their bodies, seeing the beauty of nature, all these different things. The, but the love would be carried within, not outside. That was going to be the new way. So we heard this already in what Reverend Jerry said, that God is love. And we have another saying, I, I bet you have it in, in unity as well. God is all there is, and God is love. God is all there is. You mean all those people who are fighting with each other over there in whatever country, and we always have a few, there, God in expression? Somehow or other, it doesn't seem to make sense, but that's what we believe. Perhaps they're challenging us to see something, some issue, or just the fact that fighting doesn't ever really seem to solve anything, to make it really clear that that's not the way to show God's love. But God is all there is. You know, when I was in classes, and they, they told us God is all there is, that was okay, I could handle that. And everything is an expression of God, including you, including me. And I said, oh boy, I don't know if I can take that. That seemed a little outrageous. Ah, but it somehow is true. And it's a great, like a beacon for you. If I am an expression of God, how will I be today that's different, that's better? How can I let out some of my talent that I maybe haven't really made much use of lately? That talent is a gift of God. That is part of God's expression as me. How can I use that today? How can I do something that will help someone else have a better day? I got a little more used to that idea that I am an expression of God. And I hope you can do that too. Or maybe your old hand at it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, God is all there is. God is love, and you, you, right here, right now, are an expression of God. So we are very fond of the master teacher, Jesus. And Jesus showed love always. He cared, for, he taught the people because the changes that we want to make in ourselves, in our lives, and in the world have to start with understanding. So he taught the people. He healed people. He rose Lazarus from the dead. He did amazing things. I don't know if any of us are quite ready for raising someone from the dead, but we can all work on loving, sharing the truth that we know in a way that isn't, um, that, that is gentle, sharing the truth that we know by living it. We can also f follow what Jesus had to say and did. Jesus gave us many teachings, and we have the Bible, of course, all of the 
all of the many, uh, all of the four Gospels. And then the letters, like, you know, First and Second Corinthians and so on and so forth, written by St. Paul, who never even saw Jesus. But somehow he was filled with the essence of who Jesus was. May we all be like that. And he was just empowered to go out and walk up and down all the difficult trails and to, to many, many different cities to share what Jesus did, what Jesus said, and how to be loving. God is all there is. Even cell phones that come on whenever they want to. <laughs> God is all there is. God is all the technology. Aren't we blessed that we have it so much? So one of the, uh, the um, Gospels, the Gospel of John. Oops. I lost it. <laughs> okay. Here we go. The Gospel of John gives us this wonderful quotation, very similar to something we already heard, I suppose. You know, there were 10 commandments that um, were very special to, to the Hebrew people. And they, were, they helped them to, to set themselves aside from the others around them and to know how to act. Because all the things that it said in that list of 10 thou shalt nots, everybody around them was doing those all the time. So if they weren't, they would stand out. And the idea was that they would stand out as a loving people, faithful to their, their idea of God. So there were lots of other ideas of God all around them. Those 10 thou shalt nots, were replaced by a new commandment by Jesus. He says, said, I will give you, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you should love one another. This is how all will know you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. It's kind of like your, you know, we all have ID badges. That's our ID badge, our behavioral, attitudinal ID badge. You don't have to save them in the basket for next week. <laughs> it's just, but by loving one another, that's how they can tell. Oh, that must be a follower of Jesus. That must be, look how loving that person is. So this is a blessing for each of us, this new commandment. And just as Jesus said someday to the woman at the well, oh, someday you, you don't have to go anymore. You won't have to go anymore to a special temple far away. The temple will be within yourself, within yourself. And by loving one another, you will be a disciple of Jesus. And I love this little saying that comes from Fred Rogers. Anybody have know who that is? Oh, good. Well, you know, he was a Presbyterian minister. But he decided, he didn't, he didn't work in a church. He came up with that wonderful TV show everybody loved and watched and the kids had to get home and make sure, get up, get over, to see Mr. Rogers in his neighborhood. And he says, love isn't, an, isn't a state of perfect caring. It's an active noun, like struggle. To love someone is to strive to accept that person exactly the way he or she is right here, and right now, and he said that in a book called The World According to Mr. Rogers. So I'm going to leave you with that thought. That's how we can bring it back, not from the very vague 
God is all there is. God is love. That expansive everywhere thing that is love, we can bring it back into our own today, right now, right here. So let's turn within and bring some of these thoughts into our hearts and light up that, that torch, that torch of love within each of us. And if you like to close your eyes, go ahead. If you'd like to just look down, just to keep the whatever distractions there might be at a minimum. So right here, right now, God is in, through, and expressing as you. That same God that created the entire universe, all the constellations, all the planets, all the galaxies, out into the farthest space, God is, and into the closest space, your own heart. Turn your attention to your breathing, feeling it going in and out, in and out. God is breathing you. God is the life in your body. God is breathing you. Watch your breathing and let yourself become calm, deeper and deeper and deeper. Feel the light of God's healing settling from above your head into your head, neck, and shoulders as they all relax as you watch your breathing. And the healing light fills your chest and your abdomen, your right arm, your left arm. of healing, the light of love that makes all things new. Watching your breathing, you go deeper and deeper.
knowing the blessing of God, you breathe a little more deeply. And a little more deeply to bring yourself back into the room. Knowing that you are not your body because it is an object you know. You are not your mind for that too you know as an object of your knowledge. You are consciousness, that same consciousness that looks out of every eye, that senses every beauty. You are that consciousness that is God expressing as you take a deeper breath, and when you're ready, open your eyes and see this brand new day. I thank you very, very much for the invitation to come to this wonderful, beloved spiritual center and speak to you. Just the prospect of it made me happy. <laughs> so I'm just delighted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is we who thank you, Reverend Ikea. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are what? An ocean. an ocean of love. We have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, compelling values by which we strive to live. Each week we will join together in saying one of our statements. Please join me in saying this week's statement, which is on your screen. Our mission is, we are a creative, joy-filled, spiritual community dedicated to healing, inspiring, and transforming the lives of all people through prayer, education, and love. And in this space, feeling so inspired by that mission as, as well as our vision and values, and feeling so enriched by what we've experienced here today, let us take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous ties and love offerings. Michael's going to share another song, during which time you are invited to support this congregation with a check made out to USC or by cash or by making a donation online. If you are here in the sanctuary, our usher will come through and take your offering. Practicing the principle of tithing ourselves as a congregation, we are pleased to tithe 10% of the offering collected every Sunday to various unity organizations and local nonprofits that serve our city. So let us take now a moment to bless our tithes and love offerings as you cup them in your hands or close to your hearts. Let us say our offering blessing, which is on your screen. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. All right, what we're about to hear is a tune called Love is Where You Find It. And when I was thinking about what to perform today, for Ikea, she said, it's going to be all kinds of love here. And I said, ah, I wrote a tune with Pilar 20 years ago that covers pretty much that. And uh, so I actually had to retranscribe my own work because uh, I had never really written a proper chart for it because once we wrote the tune, we just started performing it immediately and didn't even uh, bother to think about somebody else doing it. 
So it was kind of fun. And uh, I actually sent her her own chart. <laughs> she was very happy to get it. And uh, so here's our tune. And it's, uh, actually, here, let's get the, the melody together for, uh, I'll need you on the mi middle part, which is. That's it. Love is where you find it. Mm, 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 mm. Love is where you find it. That's it. Two, three, that's it. I'm so tired What I see going down Oh, my good friend is crying Cause the family put her down She don't fit the picture Of a white Picket fence life Where there's got to be One husband and there's got to be One wife It's making me mad What I see Before my eyes Good people Hurting And tired Of telling lies Who made this decision? Tell me I don't understand Who says that she can't love a woman And a man can love a man Cause love is where you find it Love is where you find it That's it Love is where you find it Love is where you find it. Sing that again. Love is where you find it. Love is where you find it. Love is where you find it. Where you find it. Well, I know you see what I see. There's so much love being wasted here Look far enough inside your heart And there's no need for fear Go ahead, Reuben, you can dig in now Well, it's driving me crazy Everywhere that I look You know love ain't no lesson That you can learn in some book No one can tell you What is right or what's wrong Cause the music is inside you So celebrate your song Cause love is where you find it 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 Twenty years that song has aged well. Thank you. Let us bless our tithes and love offerings now. Join me in the blessing on the screen. Spirit of the living God, 
Bless the acts of our hands, our minds, our hearts. May everything offered here at Unity Spiritual Center be a reflection of all that is good within us. Grant us the courage to patiently listen for the stirring of your presence. Enliven our spirits with humor. Fill us with reverence for one another and gratitude for our diversity. May unity, beauty, and truth be the fruit of all we do. And so it is. Amen. <laughs>